name is David Fang. I am a performing magician. As a performing magician, I get to use magic to entertain all types of people. But today, I want to do something a little bit different. Today, I want to use TEDx as an intellectual platform to talk about my experience and life lessons I learned by performing magic with all types of people, right? Celebrities, singers, hospital patients, jail inmates, homeless people, and more. Uh, today, I'm not going to be doing any magic on stage. If you guys are interested, you can check it out on my social media about my magic and these people that I get to meet. I love performing and filming magic, but more importantly, I like to capture people's reaction to magic like those you just saw. Uh, whether you are a celebrity or someone without money, everyone reacts to magic. And to me, that's very, very interesting because magic is react people's reaction to magic is one of the hardest things to fake. And because of that, it shows something really genuine about the person that you don't get to see that often. To me, the fun of magic is about bringing out those reactions that you just saw and that inner child that they once had. We all know that as kids, we were all once as kids, and some of us are still kids right now. And uh, we get excited by the most ordinary things, right? You see a gift underneath a Christmas tree, and you get freaked out already not knowing what the gift might be. We play the game, the floor is lava, as if the floor is actually lava, with the utmost intensity and imagination. And need needless to say, we believe that Toy Story is real, and we're always on the lookout when the toys are going to move by themselves. Right? Uh, happened to me, I'm sure it happened to a lot of you guys. Um, but things change. The older we are, the lo longer we are living in this world of reality. And part of growing up is that we're constantly learning about new things and ideas. And, and sometimes when you think about it, knowledge and imaginations don't often go hand in hand. Right? When you're learning about a new concept or idea, you are by definition learning about what it is but also you're learning about what it is not. Think about it. Learning about the law of gravity tells us that we can no longer fly like Superman because of gravity. It only takes a few biology class for a kid to realize that with science and DNA and all that, the average life expectancy for all of us here is about 80 years old. There goes the kids thinking that we can all live forever and happy. Well, knowledge certainly benefits us in so many ways and equips us with the understanding of how the world works, it also destroys our imagination of what the world can be. The more we learn about the world, for some reason, the less excited we become about it. And needless to say, we don't play the game the floor is lava anymore because we know it's not real. But then also, we don't have that imagination to make it real anymore, right? And that's when magic comes into play when you think about it. Every single magic trick it's an attack against the reality that we learn in life. If I can throw a ring in the midair, it defines the law of gravity. If I can guess the car that you're thinking of, it defines the law of probability. If I can catch a bullet through my mouth, it defines the law of physics. It's dangerous, but you know, it shows these things that we can do. <laughs> um, I might or might not have done some of those things. Uh, and you know, it's a, it's a good feeling because people react to magic because of that, right? Uh, when they see magic, they, they realize that certain impossibility might not be as impossible. And then it, it brings back that imagination that one's had when they were kids. Um, for me, people's reaction to magic is very precious because for that 15 to 30 seconds that you see, they had to reconcile with what they learn is real in life with what they are seeing in front of them. And if I tell you guys, you know, I love performing magic because it creates these wonderful reactions of the audience, that's only part of the story. So far, I've been talking about how magic affects the mind of the audience. Uh, but I think what's also important is talk about how magic affects uh, a magician like myself. I, I don't really get freaked out whenever I perform a trick because right, I know the me me mechanism, I know the secret behind it, so it doesn't create that moment of astonishment. I, I first started performing magic because of knee surgery, actually. I had a torn meniscus. I used to play a lot of sports. And you know, uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, you know, once you have a surgery, it takes about one or two months to recover. So during that one or two months, uh, you couldn't really doing any be doing anything. You'd be just lying on your bed 
and I'm a very obsessive person. I always need to be doing things. So one day I went onto YouTube, like most people when they're on the bed, and um, I, I watched this video of this one guy doing some fancy shufflings with cars, and then I got into car magic and then into magic in general. And w when you first start learning magic, you have uh, several, you have two main obstacles actually. The, the, the first challenge is the many, many hours that you need in order to perfect the trick and the illusion. For me, that was actually pretty easy because I'm a very obsessive person. I can deal with the long hours of uh, self uh, being inside the room, just learning about tricks and all that. Um, it's the second challenge that's very difficult to me and it is the courage to perform magic and go out there to do magic for people, right? You can spend many, many hours that you want practicing, but at the end of the day, you still have to go out and perform. And it was hard as hell for me because I was this really shy Asian kid and um, it, it, it's just not easy for someone like me. So believe me or not, it took about two months for me to muster my courage and perform for my first group of audience. Uh, I only did about 10 minutes of magic, but believe me, that was the best start that I could have asked for. Fast forward about six years now, I'm performing magic for celebrities, artists, singers, hospital patients, jail inmates and such. It's all because I decided to take a risk and perform for my first group of audience. And speaking of my first group of audience, I want to tell you guys how that exactly happened. Uh, many years back, I was preparing and studying for a, a, a finance exam it's called the CFA. Does anyone know what the CFA exam is? Okay, some of you guys know. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty intensive exam you need to be studying for many, many months, and even if you did your study, uh, the pass rate is about 33%. So I, I did study as a, as a good uh, Asian kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, stuff happens, right? Stuff happens to me, stuff happens to all of you guys, right? A um, Couple of days before the exam, I just got really ill. I have a severe runny nose, na nasal congestion, my, I had really bad stomach ache. So um, on the day of the exam, uh, I went to the test center. I was really not feeling well. When the test started, I remember it was probably five, 10 minutes into the exam. The person next to me raised his hand to the examiner. He said, this person next to me is blowing his nose all the time. He's just disrupting me. I can't deal with that. So he switched out to like a different place, which made me even more nervous right now that I'm not only am I not feeling well, I'm just being feel like every single time I try to blow my nose, like it's, it's like people are looking at me. So I knew I wasn't going to pass that exam, right? And it, it felt really bad because, right, you spent so many months into this, right? So, and it, it's a six hour exam, so think about it, right? So five minutes into the exam, you knew you weren't gonna pass, so what are you gonna do for the rest of six hours, right? So I thought to myself, okay, I'm going to make something positive out of that. I always carry a deck of cards with me. I think I started practicing about a couple months before that but I never had the courage to perform magic for people. But I always carry the deck of cards with me, I don't know why. I, maybe I felt like if it's the right moment, I can just ask some people to do magic. So uh, during the halftime of, of the, the test, I thought to myself, okay, I need to go out and perform for some of these people. And I started to look out for different types of audience spectators. Uh, a lot of people are talking about the exam, so I didn't want to go up to them. And I saw there was two guys that were just talking casually about some random topics. So I went up to these two guys and I say, hey guys, um, how's the exam going? Blah, 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 small talk, small talk. And then I said, by the way guys, I'm a magician. At the time I wasn't really a magician, I'm just a guy that knew two card tricks, okay? <laughs> but when you start off doing anything, you kind of have to exaggerate it to build that credibility. Uh, it is true, I think a lot of you guys can, can acknowledge that. So um, I had to say that I'm a magician so then I can catch the attention. So I did two card tricks with this deck of cards you, you see right here. It went really well. Uh, I knew it went really well because one of the guy actually asked for my phone number. I've never had anyone ask for my phone number, a guy like five minutes into the conversation. So um, <laughs> it did really well. And uh, ever since then, I never really, uh, I, I, I never looked back. So I know myself before Magic, I was this really shy Asian kid. Uh, always afraid to ask questions in a large classroom like this. And whenever there's presentation, I would, for some reason, get a lot of sweats on my back. 
And to be able to talk in front of you guys today and perform magic for thousands of people, it's quite magical and amazing. And it's all because I decided to take a risk, right? I encountered magic and I fell in love with it. When your love for something is far greater than your fear of failure, uh, you would decide to go out and do what you've been wanting to do. I'm sure a lot of you guys out here um, thinking about that one thing that you've always wanted to do, but you're afraid of the fear of failure. Uh, it's okay, you don't have to change right now because we're so used to living with reality and knowledge and what it's telling us that what you can do, what you cannot do, what is possible, what is not possible. Um, but none of that matters. The truth is, when your love for something is far, far, far greater than your fear of failure, you'll be forced to change. And that's what magic has taught me, to love something so much that you're able to risk it all. Thank you, guys.